Okay. Now that we've talked about how to push, all right, off our feet, using our push leg, using our drive leg, and using our arms, now we want to talk about how to land, all right? A couple very, very important keys here that need to be followed. One, in terms of physical safety, so you don't injure yourself. Number two, just in terms of uh, being successful if you're going to play this position. Rule number one, you always need to land on your side, okay, on the sides of your body. You never want to land on the front part of your body. You never want to find yourself when you land on your stomach like this, all right? This is incorrect. It's no good. It's going to hurt you, and it's going to not provide uh, the ability to hold on to the ball to be successful, to be under control. You always want to land on the sides of your body, okay? The sides of your body, under here, under your arm here, down through the sides, down to the hips, down to the sides of your legs. Now you work, generally we just work from a kneeling position to begin with, and this is a good way to train for young players and players who are new to the position. All you want to do is start from your knees. Again, you see our pole, all right, that works at a positive angle that gives us our guide here, and we're just going to be from here. What you'll do is step with the knee as if it was your foot, as it is it. Your knee with your foot, step with the ball, bend at the waist, because again, you want to get low, and then push off that knee, drive with the outside leg, drive with those hands, all right, here, here, and there. Okay? Notice that my arms are outstretched here. Right? My arms aren't in tight. You never ever want to be in tight in this position. All right? One, because the low arm can get underneath your body, and if you land on it, it's a danger to you. At the very best case situation, you might knock the wind out of yourself. At the very worst case situation, there's the potential to crack or break a rib. Okay? So you want to make sure that the arms are extended out here, and you want out in front of you. You never want the arms to be parallel with your body, with your torso. You would like the arms to be out in front of the head, attacking the ball. Always, always attack the ball. Attacking angles, attack. Okay? Once again, here, we'll go from here, we'll go here, we go low, we bend, and then you want to drive these arms, again, back from my hips. Here. Okay? There. Now, let's take a key, a real quick look at our hand position because this is going to be extremely important, our hand position here, all right? Now, if you notice my hand position, it's extremely important that I've got my top hand from my top arm directly on top of the ball. I've got the low hand from my low arm directly behind the ball. Now, this is very important, that the top hand not be all right, too short of the ball because the momentum of my dive will take it the energy from my hand will actually end up pushing the ball away. All right, so we want to make sure that the top hand gets directly on top. The low hand needs to be directly behind the ball, not underneath the curvature of the ball down here. You want it in behind. If you have, end up getting it underneath, what's going to happen is that ball, the energy from that ball, is going to roll up onto the bottom of your hand here, and the hand will be between the ball and the ground, which is not what you want. You want that ball firmly planted on the ground where you can use the floor as your third hand. So as opposed to working with just your two hands, you get to use the ground as a third, all right? And the top hand, the top arm, is pushing the ball down to the ground. So this is your hand position Then you've got to be really careful that you get every single time. Top hand directly on top, low hand directly in behind, pushing the ball down to the floor. Do not, and I see a lot of goalkeepers do this, even at the highest levels, and it's just a bad habit that nobody's really ever taken the time to correct them on, and they've let them get away with it, where the ball comes up off the floor. You do not want this ball to come up off the floor in any way, because now you lose stability. You lose stability because you're working with two hands, as opposed to keeping the ball on the ground, pinned to the ground firmly, where now you have three hands. Three hands versus two hands. It gives you more stability. It gives you more strength. Okay? Okay. Now, let's take the two elements and let's try to put them together. So you've got your starting position. Again, we've got our pole denoting a positive angle with a visual cue for our younger players or newer players who are just starting this. It'll be important for them to constantly be built from a visual perspective to know what their line should be. Start in a good set position. You never want to stand up tall here. 
because again, now your body's not coiled like the spring. There's not energy isn't built up. The energy is dissipated because we're standing tall. So we want to get down. We want to be coiled. Weight on the front thirds of our toes. All right, head forward. All right, our hands in a neutral position. We don't want our hands to start outside the body line. All right, because it's not in a neutral position. You always want to start center. Center from top to bottom. Center from left to right. Which means my hands are at my waist. All right, they're not too low. They're not lower than center. The center of our body is our core here. So we start here, and then step. If I'm going to my right, step. Lower, hands back, and now I push off. Boom. All right, and now I'm here. Arms extended. You notice the low arm is not tucked underneath me here. All right, in a bad position, in a dangerous position physically, but it's out here in front of me there. All right, low hand in behind the ball. Top hand directly on top of the ball, ball being pinned to the floor. Arms extended out here, and my head is down behind the ball. You never want to get a position where your head is up here on top. Let your head come down behind the ball. Here. All right, this is a good safe position like this. All right, let's do it again. So if I'm here, I start, all right, in a good coiled step position. I step towards that ball, and I'm going to turn my hips slightly towards where I want to go. If I want to go this way, these hips and my shoulders will turn like this with the feet. Here, here, low, hands back, back knee bent. Don't keep it straight. Bend it down towards the ground here, and then I push. There, okay? Again, head down behind the ball, hand directly on top with the top hand low hand directly in behind, all right? If I were to go to the left side, let's say I want to go to the left side, same kind of concept, okay? Take my pull, place it down out here, okay? Pull, place my pull there, now I'm set. Same kind of concept. Now the ball's on my left side. I'm going to lead with that left foot. Again, I'll coil it down. All right, hands in a good neutral position. Step with that left foot. Don't overstep, don't understep. You've got to find what the right distance is where you're maximizing your power. Here, lower. Now at the same time, I'm going to push off my push foot. I'm going to drive across my body with my drive leg, and I'm going to push those hands out here, right here, here, in there. Okay? Arms extended out. Top hand on top, low hand directly behind, not underneath the ball where the ball rolls up on top. This is not a good position. In behind, bam, like this. And we go again, one more time. Okay, right. here, step, turn the hips, get it low, back knee bent, hands in my hips, ready to push. Push. Okay, like such. All right, so this is the beginning technique that you'll need for new goalkeepers in the position. All right? Work it step by step. Master each step along the way. All right? Don't move on to the next step until you've mastered the step that you're working on. All right? It's important that that way the transition from step to step to step is smooth and you'll lessen the frustration uh, for younger players. All right? Now let's work with some drills that we can do for younger players, newer players, the drills that they can go through to help master these techniques.